Margaret Tobin is believed by scholars to have been born on July 18, 1867, in a cottage near the Mississippi River in Hannibal, Missouri, on Denkler's Alley. The three-room cottage is now the Molly Brown Birthplace and Museum on 600 Butler Street in Hannibal. Sometimes referred to as the unsinkable Molly Brown, this survivor of the 1912 Titanic disaster has become the subject of many myths and legends throughout the years. Ironically, Brown was never referred to as Molly during her life, with the moniker given to her posthumously. Her parents were Irish Catholic immigrants John Tobin, 1821-1899, an abolitionist who supported the Underground Railroad, and Johanna, Collins, Tobin, 1825-1905. Her siblings were Daniel Tobin, born 1863, Michael Tobin, born 1866, William Tobin, born 1869, and Helen Tobin, born 1871. Both of Margaret's parents were widowed and remarried as young adults. Brown had two half-sisters, Catherine Bridget Tobin, born 1856, by her father's first marriage, and Marion Collins, born 1857, by her mother's first marriage. Called Maggie by her family, she attended her maternal aunt's school, Mary O'Leary's Grammar School, which was across the street from her home. Nearby was also the Hannibal Gas Works where her father worked as a laborer. Their neighborhood was a tight-knit Irish Catholic community, where people traveled westward through the town for the gold fields. At age 18, Margaret relocated to Leadville, Colorado, with her siblings Daniel Tobin, Mary and Collins Landrigan, and Mary Ann's husband John Landrigan. Margaret and her brother Daniel shared a two-room log cabin, and she found work sewing carpets and draperies at a dry goods store, Daniel's, Fisher, and Smith. Daniel was a miner, her life soon changed when she met J.J. Brown, a mining superintendent. The couple fell in love and married in September 1886. Molly and J.J. Brown struggled financially in the early days of their marriage. They had their first child, Lawrence Palmer Brown, in 1887, and a daughter, Catherine Ellen, followed two years later. As her husband rose up the ranks at the mining company, Brown became active in the community, helping miners and their families and working to improve the town's schools. Molly Brown was never interested in fitting in with the other leading citizens of Leadville, preferring to dress in dramatic hats. The Browns achieved great prosperity through the discovery of gold at Little Johnny Mine in 1893, with J.J. being given a subsequent partnership at the Ibex Mining Company. The family moved to Denver the following year, Colorado, where Molly helped found the Denver Women's Club. She also raised money for children's causes and continued to help mine workers. And in an unheard of feat for women at the time, Brown also ran for a Colorado State Senate seat at the turn of the century, though she eventually withdrew from the race. The Brown marriage was not a happy one, however, with J.J. harboring sexist views on the role of women and not supporting his wife's public endeavors. The two legally separated in 1909, though they never officially divorced. Brown expanded her own horizons, taking numerous trips around the world. It was during one such trip in April 1912, while in France, that Brown heard that her grandson was ill. She decided to take the first available ship, the RMS Titanic, back to the United States. It was the maiden voyage of the vessel that was supposed to be nearly indestructible. The RMS Titanic sank in the early morning hours of April 15, 1912 in the North Atlantic Ocean, for days into her maiden voyage from Southampton to New York City. The largest ocean liner in service at the time, Titanic had an estimated 2,224 people on board when she struck an iceberg at around 2340. According to Molly Brown, 
I stretched on the brass bed, at the side of which was a lamp, Brown later wrote. So completely absorbed in my reading I gave little thought to the crash that struck at my window overhead and threw me to the floor. As events unfolded, women and children were called to board the lifeboats. However, Brown stayed on the vessel and helped others escape until a crew member quite literally swept her off her feet and placed her in lifeboat number six. While in the lifeboat, she argued with quartermaster Robert Hickens, urging him to turn back and rescue any survivors in the water, and threatening to throw him in the water when he refused. Though it's unlikely she was able to turn the boat around and rescue any survivors, she managed to take some control of the lines to let the women in the boat row stay warm. After a few hours, Brown's lifeboat was rescued by the RMS Carpathia. There, she helped to pass out blankets and supplies to those who needed them and used her multiple languages to communicate with those who didn't speak English. A battered Brown did whatever she could to help the other survivors including raising money from the more wealthy to help poor passengers. Her acts of heroism, which made news, earned her the nickname The Unsinkable Mrs. Brown. Both a fictionalized Broadway musical and movie adaptation inspired by Brown's life were released in the 1960s, with the latter starring Debbie Reynolds in an Oscar-nominated role. With her newfound fame after the disaster, Brown spoke out for many causes. She served as a mediator of sorts between striking Ludlow miners, who had been working under brutal conditions, and the interests of John D. Rockefeller Sr. and Jr. She also aligned herself with the women's suffrage movement, becoming allies with Alice Paul, and spoke about workers' rights at the 1914 Conference of Great Women. Brown once again campaigned for a political seat this time as a U.S. Senator for Colorado, though she didn't win the election. Upon the outbreak of World War I, she worked with the Red Cross, setting up facilities in Newport, Rhode Island seasonal home, and later traveled overseas to work with the American Committee for Devastated France. From the late 1920s into the 30s, the dynamic Brown continued to explore her interests and defy convention, working as an actress. She regularly appeared on the stage in Laglan, inspired by the work of Sarah Bernhard and her portrayal of the Duke of Reichstadt. Molly Brown died on October 26, 1932, in her sleep at the Barbizon Hotel in New York City. A well-received biography on her life was published in 1999, Molly Brown, Unraveling the Myth, by Kristen Iverson.